Hey everyone, it's Hayes, and in today's video we're going to be talking about some last minute theories I have for the Reverse special. Before we continue though, I am aware that the book for the special is out and in turn the whole plot of the special is also out. I know it has been released officially, it wasn't a leak or anything like that, but I haven't read it and I know a lot of people who watch me and will be watching this video haven't read it either because we want to wait until we see the special to find out what happens. So whether you've read the book in whole or in part, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't confirm or deny any of the theories discussed in this video or say what happens instead. Thank you very much. Thanks. On to the theories now. These are just small ideas I have for what could be about to go down on Saturday. I'm not gonna lie, I am very excited since this is like a science fiction special and sci-fi is very much my thing. I'm doing a PhD in it. But there are obviously still the fantasy parts of Miraculous, such as the Akumas, and one thing I'm excited for is to see how the good Akumas work. So far at the minute, I believe we're going to get at the very least two, the first one being Alia as Ubiquity, and then Cat Noir as Pterodactyl Cat Blank. I do love a good dinosaur me. Now, I think these two Akumas happen under very different circumstances. So other Alia seems to be Akumatized willingly, however, it's not her we see as Ubiquity, it's our Alia. So how is that possible? I think other Alia is the one who has managed to open up this portal between the two worlds, and as such shares a connection with our Alia. How, you may ask? No idea. It doesn't matter. Parallel universes are real. I think. And other Alia's intention is to use our Alia as a portal to the world that Miraculous is set in, and I would think her motivation for this, since as I said, Alia looks very willingly akumatized, it seems that she and Hesperia are working together the same way our Marinette and Alia are working together. So Hesperia knows he can't defeat Shadybug and Claw Noir alone and needs help from alternate universe Ladybug and Cat Noir. So then we move on to Pterodactyl Cat Blank. While I think Ubiquity is definitely something that opens the special, you know, you can't really have a special about parallel universes if we don't get the parallel universe people here as soon as possible. <laughs> I think Cat Noir is akumatized right now and kind of thinking past the halfway mark. My reasoning for this is because to be akumatized so willingly, you do kind of need to trust the person akumatizing you. As we saw in 513 Migration, Monarch Daddy was able to hear Lucas' thoughts. If Hesperia akumatizes either Ladybug or Cat Noir, he will presumably find out their identities too, and when the special begins, they'll never have met Hesperia and won't know if they can trust him. I think in order for Cat Noir to be akumatized by Hesperia, it'll need to be later on so there will be some trust there, but also a dire situation to be happening. You can't tell what's going on in the background of any of these screenshots, but I'm thinking it could be when Claw Noir has decided to turn into a giant, so they therefore need to get away from him. Also, side note, before we get into that part of the theory, I swear like 90% of you when they released Claw Noir's design were like, ugh, he has a bush on his head, he looks awful. And now you've seen a bigger version of him, you're all simping for him. Like, <laughs> What? I, I do, I do not understand. Anyway, Shadybug and Claude Noir. There are two of her at one point and also a massive one of him at another and I totally think this is to do with our Gaby Baby. Now we see in the trailer him gasp and this could be due to any number of things. Realising his pancakes are bad, finding out Natalie has a crush on him, working out he's a bad and abusive dad. The list is endless, okay? But it could be that Shadybug and Claw Noir have found a way into his lair. How they would know it was there, I'm not entirely sure, other than that I've theorised before that Parallel Universe Nino broke into their lair, which is in the same place, it's in the murder basements, so perhaps they've just used a bit of logic and wondered if this world's butterfly miraculous user has the lair in the same place. As the synopsis says, they're there to get the butterfly miraculous. However, this is set before the end of season five. We know they're not successful. What I think they do instead is that Gabriel Bays will akumatize them and give them powers using the alliance rings like we saw him do all season five. And in exchange, they will use their powers to get the butterfly miraculous off Hesperia for themselves and the earrings and rings from Ladybug and Count Noir for him. Make sense? No. So I think Shadybug is using the Mouse Miraculous and has multiplied herself, but only the once since she doesn't seem that small. As we know, when you multiply, you get smaller, as for example we saw in Mega Leech, Melon got absolutely tiny. As for Count Noir, there isn't a Miraculous that makes you bigger in this Miracle Box anyway, so perhaps he uses the Rooster and chooses that power. 
However, like I said, are Gabriel Babe's akumatizing Shady Bug and Claw Noir will possibly allow him to be able to work out who they are. Right now, my only explanation for this is that because Reverse Gabriel could do the same to them if he akumatizes them, is that both Shady Bug and Claw Noir have like trained their mind to not allow Akuma to do that. Kind of something similar to what Sue Han did in Furious Foo. Or perhaps Gabriel Babes does find out their identities and is just like, oh, both my son and this random girl are useless. It is not them. It could never be them. No way. <laughs> so we have Shady Bug and Claw Noir working with Gabriel Babes and Lady Bug and Cat Noir working with Hesperia. And I kind of hope that when Hesperia does akumatize Cat Noir, he does find out who Cat Noir is so they can have a sweet father in some moment, even if Hesperia doesn't explain what he saw to Adrian. However, I also think there could be an identity reveal of Hesperia and both Adrians find out that their dad is Hesperia and if that's the case I can't wait to see the reaction of both Adrians. So we've all seen this by now, a screenshot of either Ladybug or Shadybug using the Butterfly Miraculous. You can see the brooch here, the cane on her back and despite the lighting you can see the purple on her arms and legs. However, I'm on the fence of whether this is Ladybug or Shadybug. The argument for Ladybug is the hair, it's in pigtails, however the rest of the outfit does look very much like Shadybug's. I think the sequence of events leading up to this is that there is a fight at the school between them all, Hesperia gets injured and can no longer fight, and then either Ladybug or Shadybug uses the Butterfly Miraculous themselves. If it's Ladybug who uses it, I would think she possibly either akumatizes Shadybug or Claw Noir into good versions of themselves, as the synopsis states, and Ladybug and Cat Noir try to show the counterparts a better way to behave, or if Alia is there, re her into ubiquity and send Shadybug and Claw Noir back to their universe. And if this is Shadybug, I would assume she uses the Butterfly Miraculous the same way Monarch Daddy does, and perhaps akumatizes Cat Noir or someone else into a supervillain. The final thing I want to talk about are these black veins on Shadybug's face. I know a lot of you said it could be a cataclysm, but when Cat Noir does that to Monarch Daddy in Destruction, it doesn't look like that at all. So what I'm thinking instead is that it's the effect of being in a parallel universe. Now, since parallel universes arguably are not real, <laughs> and there are also technically no real real rules for writing science fiction, some parallel universe stories include stuff like this, some don't. For example, in the Doctor Who episode Rise of the Cybermen, there are no physical consequences on the Doctor, Rose or Mickey for being in a parallel universe. However, in Into the Spider-Verse, all the versions of Spider-Man apart from Miles all glitch out from time to time because they are in the wrong universe. So perhaps these black veins are a consequence of being in a world when they shouldn't be and they should hopefully fade when they get back to their correct universe. So those are all of my last minute little theories for you besties. I'd love to know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.